CTV News at 6 with Hudson Mack. Mounties say a witness in Nanaimo could hold the key to keeping a cigarette thief behind bars. Earlier this month, RCMP in Vancouver arrested a Langley man in connection with a string of cigarette thefts across the province. Police say he targeted small business owners who made large cigarette purchases from Costco stores. In Nanaimo, one victim found a note on her windshield from a witness who saw someone take thousands of dollars worth of cigarettes from her car. Key evidence put in that note that was uh, used to help identify who the person was. We need to speak to that person. We're calling them a good Samaritan because that evidence was very key in identifying the person for at least some of the, the future thefts from Costco. If you witnessed the robbery on December 5th in Nanaimo or saw someone leave a note on the car in the Superstore parking lot, you're asked to contact Nanaimo RCMP or Crime Stoppers. Nanaimo RCMP say reports that the city has become a hub for drug trafficking have been greatly exaggerated. Several newspapers in BC have published stories saying the Harbour City is emerging as a key thoroughfare for Vancouver Island's drug trade. The head of Nanaimo's RCMP detachment says that is not the case and that the city deals with the same issues any port city in the world would, including Victoria and Vancouver. The RCMP says organized crime does exist in Nanaimo, but that doesn't make it the jumping point for drugs for the entire island. Nothing in the article concerns me. It just, you know, basically speaks to labeling Nanaimo perhaps as a, as a crime hub. And Nanaimo is not a crime hub. Nanaimo is a, a town like other towns in British Columbia. And I just wanted to sort of reassure the, the citizens of Nanaimo that basically we are on the policing issues that are in the town. Yeah, yeah. Mounties have made a number of gang-related drug busts in Nanaimo over the past few years, most recently seizing significant amounts of drugs and cash from a man they say had connections to the notorious Red Scorpion. A 48-year-old Duncan man has been charged with attempted murder after his father was shot in the chest with an arrow. Police were called to a home on Maple Bay Road Sunday night. They found the 70-year-old victim with an arrow in his chest. Marvin Antoniuk Sr. was airlifted to Victoria General Hospital in critical condition. His son, Marvin Antoniuk Jr., was taken into custody. The male has remained in our custody since the time of his arrest and he appeared before a justice of peace. And the Justice of the Peace has remanded him in custody until Thursday for his first court appearance. RCMP are still investigating and would not comment on whether Antoniuk Jr. was known to police. Marvin Antoniuk Sr. remains in critical but stable condition in hospital. A judge has ordered Crown prosecutors to release key video evidence in a Victoria murder trial showing the accused killer just minutes after a teenage boy was stabbed to death. Corey Barry is on trial for the murder of Justin Wendland, who was attacked outside the Times Colonist building in 2010. Throughout the trial, the court has heard that Barry thought he was being followed that night and thought Wendland was part of a group of people that wanted to hurt him. Within moments of the attack, he arrived at Victoria Police Headquarters. Report, Jeff. Um, hi there. I just got a, a attack by Sean Sevigny's crew. A which? Uh, son, Sean Sevigny's crew. You just got attacked? Yeah, and I just ran away from there. From where? Times Colonist. So, are you in any way involved in this dispute that just happened? Yes. Okay. Are you injured? Uh, no. Okay. Thank God. All right. Just hold on for a second now. You know there was a stabbing there, don't you? Yes. You do know that? Yes. Okay. Were you there when it happened? Yes. Okay. Then you're a witness, sir. What I need you to do is stay on the phone for me, and I'll have an officer come and talk to you, okay? Okay, thank you. Is that your dog with you? Yes. Is he okay? Uh, yeah, he's just scared. But is he hurt? Uh, no, not that to tell. Okay. And what's your name? Good, good, Barry. Today, Barry's trial heard from a forensic psychiatrist who says he believes mental illness, drug abuse, and a head injury could all have contributed to Barry's mental state on the day of the murder. Testimony continues tomorrow. A judge will rule tomorrow whether a souk man is criminally responsible for his mother's gruesome death. Alex Conte is charged with second-degree murder in the death of 58-year-old Sarah Nickerson. Today, two psychiatrists testified Conte was experiencing severe psychosis when he killed his mother in January of last year. The court heard that at the time of the killing, the 20-year-old had been off his antipsychotic drugs for months. Just days before, Conte saw a psychiatrist who said he was hallucinating. The doctors testified Conte believed his mother's body had been taken over by an evil being that had to be destroyed, and he did not think he was killing his mother at the time of the attack. 
A National Historic Site in Vic West may soon undergo a transformation. The company that owns the Roundhouse wants to return it to its former glory as a destination development. The holding company Focus Equities owns the 20 acres of land, which includes the Bayview Place development. It's taking an application to the City of Victoria this spring to develop the Roundhouse into a shopping destination anchored by a grocery store. The Roundhouse was built by Canadian Pacific Railway on the original site of Victoria's first rail terminal built in 1886. A new Mustel poll suggests the BC Liberals may be closing in on the NDP. The survey sample was small, just over 500 people, but it showed the Liberals gaining ground. The NDP is still the province's most popular party with 43% support, but the Liberals are up to 33%. The 10% spread is tighter than a September poll, which showed the parties 13 points apart. The B.C. Conservatives and Green Party are tied at 11% support. The B.C. Supreme Court has denied the Auditor General's request for access to legal documents related to the cost of the B.C. rail trial. John Doyle argued the information is necessary for an audit. In October of 2010, David Bassey and Bobby Virk pleaded guilty to breach of trust and receiving benefits in connection with the sale of BC Rail seven years earlier. Many people were outraged when the province agreed to cover their $6 million in legal fees. Like many British Columbians, I was hopeful that the uh, Auditor General would be, would be successful in his application, that more information would come out about the $6 million in legal fees that the provincial Liberals wrote off. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. The judge may well be correct on the law, but I think the public uh, interest was very strong here. People wanted to know what was the background with the $6 million in legal fees. In denying the request, the court said the information is protected under solicitor-client privilege. Independent MLA John Van Dongen was given intervener status in the case. He says releasing the files is in the public interest. There is no word yet whether Doyle will appeal the court's decision. The provincial government is making a rare move, appointing an independent consultant to review the next budget before it's brought down. Tim O'Neill is the Bank of Montreal's former chief economist and executive vice president. He will review BC's economic forecast from now through the 2015-2016 fiscal years. The finance minister says O'Neill was hired for added assurance. In order to make decisions about the amount we spend on programs like health care and education, we also have to make certain assumptions and projections about how much money the government will have. I would like people to know that we are basing those assumptions on sound methodologies and sound principles and someone of Mr. O'Neill's stature I think can help to, to verify and validate that. The government says O'Neill will have full access to finance ministry staff as needed. BC's Auditor General will also do a review of the budget after it is released February 19th. Two construction workers are trapped in a deep quarry in Quebec after an apparent landslide which swept their vehicles into a nearly 100-meter pit. It happened this morning just east of Montreal when a landslide took out two trucks and an excavation vehicle. A third worker managed to escape his excavator moments before it plummeted. Rescuers had trouble accessing the area and called in a helicopter. Authorities are calling it a risky rescue mission. The terrain is completely broken and the chopper had to navigate carefully through a narrow crevasse each time it drops rescuers off. One of the vehicles was found, but it was empty. The rescued worker is suffering from frostbite and shock. The rescue mission has been suspended until tomorrow when crews can bring in heavy machinery first thing in the morning. Well, first she fell and hit her head during an inaugural event, and now Barbara Walters has the chicken pox. The 83-year-old was in hospital being treated for the fall when she was diagnosed after developing a fever. Unlike many people, Walters never caught the virus as a child. Chicken pox is said to be far more severe in adults and can be fatal. Walters is now out of the hospital and recovering at home. Nanaimo Council has voted in favor of peeing in public as long as it's inside the city's first downtown loo. A successful one-year pilot project proved that downtown public washrooms would help clean up the core. RCMP say public infractions went down and the nuisance and cleanup piled upon businesses decreased. The Portland Loo model has been chosen at a cost of $100,000, but taxpayers won't be on the hook for all of it. The Downtown Nanaimo Business Improvement Association is pitching in. Now that we've got the results of that project, yes, we do see that it is um, something that is a need in downtown Nanaimo. So uh, the board, the DNBIA board, has uh, allotted 23000 of capital funds to uh, purchase uh, the Portland Loop. 
The new loo will be open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and is expected to be installed in Diana Kral Plaza in the coming months.